Welcome to On the Deck. Today I'm heading to the Alpena County Library to meet with maritime archaeologist Pat Labadee to talk about a very special shipwreck. Let's go. Hey Pat, beautiful Hello. day to see you. What a pleasure to meet you here. Well, it is a great day, and I'm looking to learn a little bit more about the Choctaw. Oh, you've come to the right place. Oh, perfect. Well, Absolutely. Let's head inside. Good. So, Pat, we're here in the Alpena History Room, and, you know, by the looks of it, you can just feel the history coming in from these books and these images. Such a great place. And, you know, there's tons of information on so many different shipwrecks here in the Alpena Library, including the Choctaw. And this is one of the most recent discoveries here in the Thunder Bay National Marine Sanctuary. Can you fill us in a little bit on how it was discovered? Well, it, interestingly, the Choctaw has been much sought after for several years by uh, different divers and historians. But uh, in 2011, the Marine Sanctuary headed a project with Sony Corporation to do a film and a group of students from Saginaw were invited to select a wreck that they thought was one of the more mysterious ones and to search for it and the Choctaw was their choice and they were unsuccessful in the end and so it only led to the suspense for exactly where the Choctaw lie and the sanctuaries uh, Divers and, and archaeologists were successful in finding it just a year ago, and uh, it, it satisfied the curiosity of a lot of us. The search for the Choctaw had truly been a puzzle for most historians and scientists. After several attempts to find the vessel, researchers from NOAA and the University of Delaware discovered two shipwrecks on May 23rd. Those shipwrecks appeared to be the Ohio and the Choctaw. But to understand how this mammoth freighter sank, we must first learn its purpose. Uh, it was a bulk freighter, uh, like the dominant class of ships on the Great Lakes, used for carrying iron ore and grain products and coal. And uh, it was a unique design though. It was patterned after a type of vessels introduced in the late 1880s called whalebacks. And Choctaw was a little bit different than the real whalebacks, which were uh, round hull rather than the traditional shape with a flat deck and everything. And uh, Choctaw was not a true whaleback, but what we call a straight back. It had a flat deck, unlike the rounded decks on whalebacks. A work of art for its time. The ship was built in 1892 by the Cleveland Ship Building Company. With a combination of wood and steel, the innovative vessel could maneuver well through the Great Lakes waters. Around the turn of the century was an ugly time for ships, and in 1915, it would be an ugly time for the Choctaw. The Choctaw was the victim of a collision in a thick fog. Uh, it was struck by a Canadian freighter. It isn't certain whether one of the ships didn't whistle properly or whether it simply wasn't heard, uh, but the two collided about five miles off of Presqu'ile and uh, Choctaw went down very quickly. Unfortunately, her crew were all saved by the Wakanda, which was the other vessel involved in the collision. The shipwreck sits 295 feet below the surface, just a few miles off the coast of Presqu'ile. Divers can reach the Choctaw, but it would take elite diving techniques to get to that depth. Basically, it's like climbing Mount Kilimanjaro for divers. Instead, researchers and archaeologists use autonomous underwater vehicles to learn more about the wreck and what secrets it still holds. There are existing uh, design drawings for the Choctaw, so there aren't a lot of mysteries about its construction. Um, an examination of the hull will illustrate more about the circumstances of its loss resulting from a collision. It'll be interesting to see exactly where they're their further research leads. Still a mystery. Yes, yes it is. NOAA researchers and maritime archaeologists will now have years to continue investigating and gathering more information on the Choctaw and what else lies beneath the waves of Lake Huron. I hope you'll join us next week for another evening on the deck.